Okay, good to have Chris Douglas back here, U of M Flint, uh, talking about something that I've been hearing a lot about recently, the Trump tax cuts. And I'm sure that's not the official name when it comes to the legislation, but a lot of people are talking about the Trump tax cuts. First of all, what are they? What is What was that legislation? So it's a variety of tax cuts. One was it lowered the corporate tax rate from about 35% or so down to a flat 21%, which people on the left say is a tax cut for corporations, which means the tax cut for rich people. That's not correct because there is no person called a corporation. There are people who work for corporations. So the question is, which person who works for a corporation pays the corporate tax? It's unlikely to be the executives because executives are rich and have options. And when you're rich and you have options, there are ways to get around paying the tax. So the tax gets passed on to the person who doesn't have options besides paying the tax. Right, largely, that's consumers by just higher prices where there's a corporate tax. The corporation passes that on to consumers via higher prices. It's lower wages to the middle class workers who work for the corporation because if you're working a corporate job as a middle class worker, you probably don't have a lot of option immediately to go to if maybe you don't get a pay increase because the corporation now is paying higher taxes. As well as the corporation passes on the corporate tax to people who own stocks you know, in the form of lower dividends. So it's a real myth to say rich people, billionaires pay the corporate tax. It's just middle class people, consumers, people who work at the corporation, as well as people who own stocks, which middle class people do. What else um, does this do in, for the average everyday person? Um, and I know, like I said, they, they say Trump tax cuts, but I'm sure that's not what it's written. It probably has House bill, whatever, Senate bill legislation. But what else does it do that we may not even think of that might impact us that next year when it's up, we may like, oh, why did this change? What, would, what will we notice, you think? So... So you couldn't notice higher prices because you know corporations with the corporate tax reverts back to 35%, just start passing that out to consumers via higher prices. You know, wage growth might start to slow as corporations pass out the corporate tax hike to you know workers in the form of you know slower wage growth. But that was just one aspect of the Trump tax cuts. Oh. Another one was a reduction of marginal tax rates. That gets a lot of attention too, because if you are in the upper tax bracket which I believe before the Trump tax cuts was 39%. I think that reduced it down to maybe 35 or 33%, something like that. So you have to be a high income earner to be at that tax bracket. So there's a lot of attention paid to the fact that, well, you know, rich people, you know, the top 1% got some big tax savings, you know, thanks to dropping you know, the top tax bracket down to 33% or whatever. But when you look at who actually pays the income tax, it's something like half of all income tax revenue is paid by you at the top five or 10 percent of taxpayers so whatever income taxes are cut just by that fact mean that the majority of the tax savings goes to those upper income earners because they're the ones predominantly paying the income tax but the other tax brackets were reduced too oh. so even if you're a middle class taxpayer you're maybe at you know the 25 percent tax bracket you know your tax bracket got reduced to maybe something like 20 percent as as, so, as part of this and as part of this, right. So again, the critics always point to that top tax bracket being reduced, but other tax brackets were reduced as well. So if those tax cuts expire, you know, as a middle class income earner, you might notice your paycheck being short by fifty or a hundred dollars per month. Because wow, your that's is good out. And that's a big difference. So if you're a family of I don't know what the number usually family of four and you know, husband or wife are working, you're bringing in eighty thousand dollars a year you're going to see a difference in what you're bringing home then if if, oh, these yeah. cuts are, if these cuts expire. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You'll notice it. It'll be more than 20 bucks or so. I would guess probably $100 a month or so, something like that. Yeah, it, it adds up. Um, and also, uh, one thing they did to try to simplify the tax code is they doubled the standard deduction. So the standard deduction is you know just the amount that you can deduct without itemizing all your deductions. Yeah. The popular way to itemize is charitable deductions, state of local taxes as well as, as well as mortgage interest. But when they double the standard deduction, for a lot of people, it just made sense to take that standard deduction rather than itemizing all of your deductions. Well, if the Trump tax cuts expire, that standard deduction will go back down to what it was back before 2017. 
So for a lot of people who weren't itemizing, they'll have to start itemizing again. What impact then would that have on, you know, you've talked about large business raising prices, but um, small business, average, you know, people, especially when we are in a, what seems like an uncertain economic times for some, what, what would that, what would that do? Or what would the, an economist like yourself say to, to, for that to happen in the middle of, you know, people are still struggling. Right. So there'll be another hit to people's pocketbooks, um, individual income earners, families, small businesses. Um, so everyone will kind of feel a pinch of by those tax cuts expiring, their taxes will go up. So it's kind of hard to remember what taxes were like because um, this tax cut was an eight-year tax cut. Eight years was a lifetime ago, it feels like. Yeah. Well, like we're talking about, yeah, you'll notice, um, you know, 50, 100, maybe more per month in taxes with those tax cuts expiring. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but as of now, they are expiring. Congress could re-up them or make changes, but that would we don't know what the political world is going to be at that point. So right now they are they are set to expire as of now. Right. And it's hard to know what to make of the poll right now, the November election. It looks like Harris might have a small lead. So I would suspect that if she does win, those tax cuts are going to expire. Or if anything, what they will do is they will re-up the tax cuts, but maybe just for middle class workers, because there will be pushback. You know, the majority of the, of the electorate are middle class kind of by definition. And you know, middle class workers, for understandable reasons, aren't too keen to see their taxes go up. So I think it would be likely, somewhat likely, under an heiress administration in a Democratic House in Congress to continue those tax cuts, but just for like, you know, the middle income tax brackets and then let like the upper income tax bracket tax cuts you know, expire. You know, have that top bracket go back up to 39%. And I'm almost certain they would let the corporate income tax go back up to you know 35 percent from the 21 percent. Again, the notion that billionaires are the ones who pay the corporate income tax is misguided. You know that corporate income tax just gets passed on to someone: consumers, shareholders, workers. Yeah, just just today I forget. Especially well, I come from the world of broadcasting and Paramount. A lot of companies are they're laying off. They're still having troubles. Um, it seems like so. That's not something corporations would want. And there would be, you know, there's job losses, I assume, when the, the costs add up, because some businesses, the cost margins are so tight. So, Right. Yeah, there's a lot of focus on, like, record profits, so-called record profits. But that's only because you're getting this COVID rebound effect, where if you look at a graph of profits over time, you know, they're right at their historical share of GDP, you know, like 8% or so of GDP. So... The only reason why corporate profits are at a record high is because, you know, GDP is at a record high because of economic growth with rebounding from COVID and the economy growing from there. I want to ask you again, and this is something you probably deal with um, students. Uh, it's very basic, and I, I know you deal with it in high school, and I want people to hear this message from someone, you're, you know, you know this answer. What causes inflation? It increases the money supply that's used to cover massive federal budget deficits. It's really that simple. The government's spending a ton of money. Where do they get the money from? They're not taxing because people resist tax hikes. They don't like to borrow because you pay back what you borrowed. The path the least resistance to finance government spending is just to print money to spend that newly printed money. And that's exactly what happened during the pandemic. You add up all the COVID spending, you're at about $4 trillion worth of COVID spending. It's amazing that the amount of money spent on COVID relief is about on par with what was spent on World War II adjusted for inflation. So it's kind of like during the pandemic, the federal government decided to fight the equivalent of World War II, and that rather than using taxes and war bonds to finance that, they just financed it by printing money. You know, the money supply more than double over the course of the pandemic, which means that out of all the dollars ever printed in human history, Half were printed since March of 2020. Wow. Yeah, so it's it's easy. Like anything with supply and demand, you create more of something, each individual unit becomes less valuable. It's kind of like, you know, if you were able to create a million perfect replicas of the Mona Lisa, they were all indistinguishable from each other. The Mona Lisa wouldn't be priceless any longer. The Mona Lisa is priceless because there's one of them. Perfect. Perfect example. So 
it's not corporate greed. And you hear that tagline from some politicians or average people on the street. But and, and that's why I wanted to ask you for certain. I mean, this is taught in, in basic economics 101, but that it make you know, it makes total sense. And I don't deny corporations are greedy. If you define greed as trying to maximize your profits, like who doesn't do that? As workers, we're trying to maximize our wages. That could be coexisting greedy. But the problem is with the corporate greed argument is that I assume corporations were greedy in 2019 when inflation was below 2%. It's That's not like corporations woke up collectively in 2021 and said, you know what we should do? Maximize our profits. What a novel idea. Yeah. Last question. I, inflation is coming down, but grocery prices are still high and everything. And I think I asked you this before. We are probably never going to see those prices come back to 2018, 2019, because inflation, when you see it on the news or the White House says inflation's coming down, that necessarily doesn't mean you're going to see your price of chicken coming down right away, correct? Right. Inflation is just the growth rate of prices. How fast are prices growing year to year? So 2.9% inflation, which is the most recent number, that just means prices are growing by 2.9%. At the end of the year, a basket of goods and services will be 2.9% more expensive compared to the beginning of the year. So it's not like prices are falling by 2.9%. They're just growing more slowly at 2.9% compared to, say, 10% like they were in 2022. Gotcha. So is it as easy, any politician, no matter who you are, to say, we're going to get the prices back to, the... it's it's not that easy, I'm assuming. To... It's never going to happen. You would have to have great depression levels of deflation to get prices back to where they were before the pandemic. And that's, yeah. <laughs> no. we hope that's not going to happen at least. Because, yeah, sure, prices fell by a third during the Great Depression, but lots of other bad stuff happened. To, at exactly. Time. Thank you so much again for educating and um, taking the time. It's always a pleasure, Dave.